a former National Soccer League club looking to make its return to the national stage. And that goal was achieved on a cool June winter's evening here at Richlands as Lions FC qualified for the FFA Cup round of 32. The destiny was unclear at that stage, but what awaited was a trip to Adelaide against the top four NPL side, as well as a dream date against last year's Cup runners-up. Here's Lions FC journey through the FFA Cup. And Lions are on their way to the FFA Cup final 32. Do they have one more in them here? Morgan again for Aochi, indeed they do. That's 5-0 Lions. And that's full time. Lions are through to the round of 32 in the Westfield FFA Cup. 5-0 to Pine Rivers. And the Lions juniors come onto the field to swap Kato Aochi after the match. And some tasty encounters in the round of 32 of the FFA Cup. Like, like I said, we go into every game to try and win the game and uh, we'll be looking at this one to win it. There's no doubt about that. Um, but, uh, but look, we did the hard work to get to the stage and then from here on in it was uh, let's go and enjoy the moment. Let's enjoy whatever comes our way. So whether we got South Melbourne or whether we got uh, Melbourne Victory or Adelaide United or, or even Croydon Kings, we, we'll, we'll approach it the same way and we'll go in and try and win the game and, and see what we can do and enjoy it. And if it, if it works, great. We go to the next round, the fairy tale continues and... If it doesn't, we can say we've uh, we've got this far and move on to around league competition. And the one thing that um, comes across in all the games they play, they don't really change from this system. Okay, 4 2 three, one. they don't really change. Their style doesn't change, they're very much what you would call a curriculum based side. They like to play out, they like to play through the channels, and if things don't work, the most obvious thing they do is they change the wingers to change it up. Okay, the actual system stays the same. So, um, obviously, the lineup that's irrelevant to us is good players in there, but you can see their names. But, uh, and to any face that you might know. Uh, the, the playing method, all right, so again, what we've got from other coaches is fast counter-attacking side, it's where they're at their strength, so they do break very, very quickly. You know, this one can be their back four, all right? They don't like to be turned around, okay? They don't have the pace, and that's come from a lot of people that's watched them play. The sides that have beaten them this year, the sides that have done well against them, are the sides that have gone at them, pressed them high, and just been a little bit more direct and targeting these two here and the right side of the fullback as well. Okay, and their left side is a strength of theirs. Okay, but the sides that do target the two centre backs and the right back and have a go. I'm generally the sides this year. I know I've seen one of their games and just scattered and brought up another game where they got uh, attacked. Rossi spoken to uh, a coach that beat him recently where they also they pressed them and went at their centre backs as well. So, okay. okay. Front two, massively important one we spoke about today, making sure that we're on the outside shoulders. All right? Can and not so much, but can if you do find yourself in a back to back, that's okay with your strength. We want to, <laughs> we want to use your speed, okay? You're a strong guy, okay? You are, you're very strong. Okay? But we need the point of difference. So you might go into Kalo, but whilst you're on that shoulder there, shall we? If it comes back into Sayal, he's looking for you in behind anyway, okay? But keep moving them. Don't be static there. Because like I said, one of their weaknesses is the balls in behind their slide. So we need to be playing that, looking for that those little balls in behind. Test them out early. And we will definitely be testing them out in that first 15, 20, looking to see how slow they are. You know what I mean? The other one is the far post. And this is one we've got to be a little bit careful of. This runner checks away. This guy comes in and blocks uh, his defender from tracking him, and they end up far post for a ball that's whipped in far post. And they have seen them a couple of times now, get free hit at headers and far post. Okay? All because of this block run. <coughs> so, one, 
We get close to them, get a piece of them, and you stay with your man. They are capable in the air. They're good in the air. Okay, they're number nine up the top. is very good in the air. So the boys at the back need to be aware of it. Okay, any, any free into the box to him, and he can finish. Okay, so they'll be very dangerous on set pieces. So we need to mark up, dig on beef, get close, get a piece of them, and stay with them. Okay, any free headers in the box, and look out. Yeah, very well actually. Um, we arrived down here today um, preparing for this game and it's, yeah, to be honest, we, we couldn't have gone for anything better. It's um, been quite good. We've done what we've had to do. We've had a good training session in Savo. So um, some of the boys have acclimatised real well to the pitch. Um, it's in good shape. So look, we're looking really looking forward to it. Um, honestly, couldn't prepare it any better. So. No overall experience for the Cup so far. Oh, it's fabulous. Right. It's probably one of the best things FFA have brought in. Um, it gives the lower league teams, such as ourselves, um, obviously an opportunity to play some of the bigger teams and hopefully maybe one of the A-League teams as well. Um, but we've really enjoyed it as a squad. Um, we've bas it's basically been a roller coaster for us. Um, and to be honest, yeah, we've, we're just enjoying it. We're going out tomorrow. And we'll enjoy every moment, and hopefully we'll come back with the result that we're after. Your thoughts on the preparations of the team? How do you think the team is like prepped, ready to go? Yeah, um, the boys uh, are keen. I think we've obviously identified some key areas where we think that we can uh, deal with a bit of damage. So uh, obviously the meeting tonight, uh, we just covered, uh, covered a few of those key uh, areas. But I think tomorrow we'll sit down again, we'll go through it again. Uh, but as far as preparation is concerned, the boys are looking good, they're in good spirits. And certainly from Mooney uh, and my perspective, we're pretty happy with things at the moment, yeah. And do you think coming down the day earlier is a big bonus and a big help? Yeah, definitely. Um, it's always nice to see uh, the boys you know, away from the training pitch. Uh, not just from my perspective, but each other. I think we all learn a little bit more about each other, so and that's always a good thing. So yeah, definitely, a, definitely a, a bonus. What's your thoughts on the FFA Cup and the experience so far? Mm. Yeah, um, this is my first experience with the FFA Cup. Uh, obviously, getting involved this year, it's, I think it's a fantastic uh, initiative. Obviously. Um, it gives teams like ourselves uh, the opportunity to mix it with the big boys and uh, you know I know tomorrow the, the boys are going to do themselves proud um, and uh, fully support uh, the direction it's going and I think it's only going to get bigger and better. How's the experience so far heading to Adelaide on a road trip? I thought it's been fantastic. It's, um, you get to experience what it's like to be a professional footballer. Um, cup football's always uh, we'll through its challenges, of course. Travelling with the lads, it's just about making sure we prepare well. Uh, but just embrace the experience, I think, and make sure that our preparation for tonight gives us the best possible chance of uh, coming away victorious. And you've just returned back from Morocco. Uh, how, do you, how are you finding that? Yes, um, so I was away with work in Morocco for, for 10 days. Um, flew straight back in. Wanted to make sure I got back for the cup, of course, because you know, it could be a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Um, this morning, look, feel fresh, ready to go. I'm sure when the first whistle goes, uh, the adrenaline will kick in and it's, um, look, it's just get back to doing the, uh, the job that we do every week. And what do you think of your chances in playing on the artificial surface? Uh, look, I'm, I'm used to it. I've played on it before. Um, so it's exciting to return to such a, um, a predictable uh, surface. We'll be able to play some good football, I think. Um, tonight's about, uh, look, it'll go either way. I think it's going to be a high tempo game. We've prepared well. We're a good side. We know how to play football. Uh, I, I think the importance of this game is going to be that we, we give it everything. 
Um, I'm sure some of the boys might not understand uh, the significance of a match such as this uh, or the, the, the importance of the achievement uh, and the accomplishment along the way. So I want to make sure that when they look back on their career that, that there are no regrets, uh, that tonight we leave it all out on the field, give 100%. Uh, and look, I'm, I'm confident we can come away with a victory. What's been your experience and travelling down to Adelaide? What's your general feeling on the competition? Uh, well, it's been pretty, it's been pretty, like, really good and really... <laughs> <laughs> Warren, just it's been a completely new experience, pretty much, you know. Um, I've never actually done this before, so it's been really good and really eye-opening to what football can do for me, so, you know, so... Pretty excited to come down and fly down to Adelaide and travel with the boys a day early, get preparations properly and be fully integrated into professional sort of side of things. Wow, it's been such a hell of a ride, you know, since I've been there since pretty much I was five, you know, so been with Rossi the last five years and to come even further than that, to come on the national stage with Lions, my home team, all the whole way through, can't go wrong really, you know, so it's pretty exciting and I'm actually pretty nervous, but, you know, get over that and get into the game. And a message maybe to other juniors coming through the club and maybe other juniors around different clubs, what would be your, your message to them? Oh, you know, you never know, know what a club can do for you, you know, new people come in, new people come out, you know, so just stick it out with what you got and you never know where you can go, you know, so I stay with Lions and look where I am now, playing down in Adelaide for the FFA Cup, round of 32. Um, Fibio, just the last couple of years, working with Lions, maybe the last four or five years between their junior and senior teams. Um, it looks like you've probably been one of the hardest working on the trip so far. Yep. Um, any sort of, uh, any sort of, anything you can expand on that? So any of the guys you've had to sort of do some extra treatment with, that kind of thing? Oh, the guys are pretty good. They handle their injuries pretty well. Um, just a couple of niggly muscle strains that we've got within the team, but, you know, most of that should be, should be all right for tonight. Um, no serious injuries coming in, so it's mostly just hands-on work with a few of the, probably the defenders. Yeah. And as physio, is this something you like, like, sort of this sort of trip is something you've done before? Or is this new to you? No, 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 I've um gone on team trips before. My last team trip was to the Philippines with one of the PNG national basketball teams. So this is actually one team's actually a small team for me to go with, so that's nice. And what do you think of the chances tonight? No, I think they're in with a good shot, definitely. Um they've trained well, they're all really, really I guess highly competitive. So yeah, I think they'll they'll be in. Uh, you've got experience in obviously having played in the NSL and involved with the A League with Gold Coast United. Yep. What do you think the fans, fans are feeling now, sort of travelling you know, to the ground, uh, obviously a big away venue like this? Yeah, the boys are obviously very excited about it. You know, it's a tremendous opportunity for them. I think they understand that. Um, they're quietly you know, confident, you know, and um, yeah, I think they're just uh, really looking forward to getting out there now. It's uh, been a long preparation, and um, yeah, they just want to get out there and show what they can do now. Really up front, I think. I think who takes the chances? I think there will be chances. Um, but, um, you know, I think who settles the quickest. And, uh, you know, if we can take some of our early opportunities that we generally do yet, um, you know, will set us up for the game. So hopefully we, we can settle quickly and, um, you know, maybe pop away an early chance would be nice. So, Dan, you play for Lions? For Lions? We've got a number of them. So, uh, um, you know, Showy back starting tonight is, is a huge bonus for us. So it takes the pressure off Kato and allows Kato a bit more space. So obviously everyone knows Kato is dangerous, but uh, Showy has the X factor. So look out for Showy tonight. He's, he's ready to go. What do you think the boys will be feeling right now heading out to the game? Yeah, obviously uh, they'll be nervous, they'll be anxious, uh, but I think they'll be excited. So. Um, it's obviously a, a new experience for them, but um, I think once they get out of there, they'll probably be uh, the most calm, most relaxed once the game kicks off. I think the, the build-up is probably the worst part in any game, and especially when you're waiting all day, preparing well, but sitting in the hotel, waiting for it to come, it can be a bit uh, daunting sometimes, and uh, I think the best thing for us is to get out there as quick as we can and play. Yeah, look, this game has been, um, look, we, we prepared for this game well in advance, and 
Um, we haven't had the luxury all season with injuries to bring on players such as um, Andy and uh, Cody and we've got um, obviously Jason on the bench and, and Daniel and it's a very strong bench and all four of those players can impact or change the game for the positive for us so um, it's probably the first time all season and it's obviously a big game for us to try and bring on good players to win us the game. Look, uh, I, I would say, you know, we, we've prepared well. They, they know what we're doing, so uh, the final messages will be about going to enjoy it, enjoy the moment, uh, making sure that they make it count. We've come all this way. Uh, it would be a real shame if we didn't perform or didn't, or, or froze, I suppose, under the camera. So it's really important to enjoy it and then give our best. If, we, if we're not good enough, we're not good enough. At the end of the day, that's football and that happens. But as long as we give our all for the club and we do our best, and then we can't ask any more of the boys than that. And good evening and welcome to the FFA Cup Match Day 3 Round 32 here in Adelaide at the Elite Systems Football Centre. It's the match between the Croydon Kings from South Australia and the Queensland Roar. Of course, uh, the team that uh, wrapped up their premiership over the weekend when uh, they defeated, uh, I think it was Wolves by four goals to three. But a terrific game here. It's grassroots football at its very best. We haven't got a big crowd here, but uh, they're starting to slowly come in. A very, very chilly night here in Adelaide. Uh, Croydon Kings, Andreas Weens, he'll be out to prove maybe a point or two. But away we go. It is uh, the match day three of uh, uh, the uh, FFA Cup here in Adelaide. To, uh, to give a close eye on him. Well, the Queensland Lions pretty much in control at the moment. They've had a few opportunities. Uh, another chance here. It comes again. Here could be the first goal, and it is. Terrific pass. And Shohil Khan has given the away side Queensland Lions the lead, and we've only played 14 minutes in this first half. Well, what a wonderful ball from the uh, from defence through to the midfielder. One of those terrific through balls. And then the, the, yeah, the presence was to get his head up and play calm through. Again, two wonderful balls from the Queensland Lions. It caught the uh, defensive uh, cordon. Over the top again. Now here's a chance for Khan again. If he can get past, uh, look like Brazali, But Brazali, well, they're looking for a penalty. Uh, the, uh, in fact, it is a penalty. Well, we've only played not even a minute in this first half. But the referee got advice from his assistant. He pointed for a corner first. The assistant said, no, it's not. It's a penalty. So it looks like a penalty to uh, the Lions. But it's uh, Andre Bonotto. Here he comes. Andre Bonotto scores. And there it is. 2-0 to the Lions. Lions FC leading by two goals to nil. And the corner coming up to Croydon. It couldn't have scripted it any better. Here it comes. Spurler. Up they go. They all go in there. And you'll hear the whistle. Oh, Clinics and a try one into the uh, defence of the uh, uh, Lions FC. And there is the final whistle. It's all over. It's all over. And Lions FC have done it away from home. And it is the Lions FC who go through to the final 16. The final score here in Adelaide. Lions FC 2 have defeated Croydon Kings 1.
Hey, Nolan, I'm still pouring here. <laughs> <laughs> Are you still jet lag? <coughs> Help me. I think I'm still under the influence. Sure, we speak so for everyone in the room. We couldn't be more proud of the lads tonight. Absolutely fantastic achievement. All in the same week, a premiership as well. Congratulations! Yeah! Yeah! Oh, so you scored the opening goal, hasn't it? Um, mate, obviously very happy for the lads. Um, we've worked really hard all season and Shawnee Carlos put it on a plate for me. I just had to get a touch and lucky enough I did and got past the keeper. <laughs> just happy for the boys to be honest. I mean, they did the hard work and um, yeah, thanks. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Who do you think, who would you like to play some next year? Um, Mate, bring on an A-League side, I think, at home. Um, there was about 900 people here tonight, which was a good, which was a good atmosphere, but I think that's I think we could get a really good crowd at home. So, yeah, A-League side at home. Yeah, what turned out to be the eventual winner? Uh, what went through your mind when you took, before you took the penalty? Before penalty? Uh, I was, actually, actually, I was expecting a parent to call me. I don't know why, but I was expecting. And... Um, I don't know, I was too calm and I, I really enjoy it to take it again and it's called for Lions. I really hope to take uh, against the A-League team would be really good for the club, we, would be re huge for us, so I would be really happy. Are you going to celebrate tonight? Definitely, <laughs> but I'm too tired, <laughs> but that's okay, I will, definitely. The big moment tonight, outstanding win. What was your take on the night? I wasn't too worried to be fair. I, Rossi was in the room when we spoke about um, being well prepared, and we were well prepared. To be honest. We, uh, we just put a lot into this, and we had the night extra here. And I was very confident that we executed our game plan was going to go well. And, uh, we did that really well too, and we played really well. So, you know, like I said, I was nervous about the game coming to it, but obviously, once it started, I was very confident. And it was a nervy last few minutes, Rossi. How were you going in the last few minutes? Oh, yeah, a few more grey hairs that I uh, you know, don't need. But uh, no, the boys were superb. You know, it, uh, couldn't be more proud of them. Couldn't be more proud of this fellow as well, the job he's done, and Darren as well. They've been fantastic from day one. So professional, we wanted to take the club to the next level. We've done that this year, and you know, I'm very, very proud of what we've done. So these guys have done that. And that was a pretty parochial crowd you had there tonight. Uh, what were your thoughts on that? It was good. I mean, it's probably it takes us back to NSL days. That's what happens. You, know, you get people giving you uh, a bit of stick from the first minute, and uh, trying to give it to you. And the game goes on. Well, that's what it's like down here in the NML. You get crowds like that. So. Uh, um, to be fair, I quite enjoyed it. It was, um, it was parochial, it was a bit intimidating at times, but our boys were, were good in that, and I think they enjoyed it, they fed off it, so that was good. Oh, just one last one, who would be uh, main and match? Probably a hard call, I know, but is there someone you can pick out? I think, I think Shahil Khan turned the game you know, with his pace and from all down the box, scoring the first one, you know, he's a real handful all night. And, uh, you know, for me, between him and Kato, Kato was superb tonight. You know, really, really had a great game and was a handful all night. And you know, our back line just stood tall all night as well, so it was, it was a tough one. But me, personally, uh, I've been with Shelly for many years, so I give it to Shelly. Hey, Warren? Yeah, look, I probably would say uh, it's hard to pick between them. There were so many good performances tonight, but, but when you break it down, there was one genuine ma match winner there, and he, he provided those moments, and yeah, we get to as well, just follow the judges. game against an A-League club, what you wanted, what's your reaction to that? Yeah, obviously delighted that we've got uh, an A-League side at home. Um, we honestly didn't have any expectations coming into this round, so we were just really keen to see who we'd get and, and we'd take it from there really, but uh, I know everyone's buzzing when the, the, the Perth Glory got pulled out and it was uh, an A-League opposition at home. And, uh, 
Yeah, I think it's just general excitement. Everyone's pretty keen to, uh, to test their wares against an A-League opposition. I'm trying to play in here. So that's one option you could play, but even so, you, you've got better options now here anyway. You've got him on the outside, Cody breaking and Sean here. Again, that's your out ball, that's your out ball. If there's nothing on. Good, well done. Go ahead and walk it out, walk it out. Can we go forward, can we look to penetrate central in? If you can't, again, you can play your out ball again and it might be where we can deliver. And by that stage, you've got two central strikers, you're attacking midfielder, second midfielder, that's four in the box that you can look to deliver to. Perth, have, you know, it's been a little bit of a transition period for Perth with so many changes, so if ever there's a chance of an upset, this may be the one. Yeah. When the place was packed and it's good to see a good roll up and let's get into it. So we're underway at Perry Park, it's Lions FC versus Perth Glory in the FFA Cup round of 16 and it's Lions who have first possession this is Risden. And there for Shandor, straight to Aochi. Khan is in behind the defenders here, tries to round the keeper, goes down. The crowd shout for the penalty, and Peter Green has awarded the penalty. And Lions inside the first six minutes with a perfect chance here for an opener. Yeah, they have, and I don't think there's much doubt about the penalty. It's been since he sent him off. I, I'm not surprised, he's laughed, man. Wow, that's thrown the cat amongst the pigeons. Terrible giveaway in the middle of midfield by Perth Glory. Really allowed lines, quick counter-attack, excellent through ball. Just what they needed to do with their pace. And that's really thrown the cat amongst the pigeons here. And it will be Andre Bonotto to step up to take this. He scored a penalty in the round of 32 against the Croydon Kings. Just awaiting Peter Green's instruction. Here's Bonotto. Oh, and he saved it. Nick Feely gets the right way, gets the congratulations of his teammates, and Bonotto just unable to slot it away there. Jared once more. Carlos. Now Khan. Khan looks like he's going to tee it up here for Janowski. On for Butters! And that's a sharp save there from the glory keeper, Nick Feely. Janowski with this free kick here for Lyons, about to enter the last minute stoppage time. Oh, and he forces the save. Collective all went out around the ground. That's it. And that's uh, full time. So an extra 30 minutes here at least required to find a winner in this one. Rinkovic again. Under five to go. This is Sandor. Sandor. He's gone around a number of defenders. Plays it back to the edge of the box. Clearance off the line. And the goal is being conceded. Chris Harold has scored here for Perth Glory. Four minutes from the end of extra time. And you can feel the collective hearts around the ground just sink after Lions conceded that goal. I guess have some consolation in that they've taken an A-League side all the way here in this encounter and certainly will earn the respect of the Australian football community. Oh, no doubt they've done very well. I mean, I'm sure they'll think about that maybe in a, in a week or so's time, but right now they'd be, that'd be the furthest thing from their mind. They'd just be really disappointed that... They find themselves a goal down, but don't dwell on that. Keep going until that final whistle. You just never know. Here's Butters. Carlos. Oh, and that wasn't far away. Corner. We've got 30 seconds remaining, plus any stoppage time that will be played. And the crowd is now starting to get to their feet as one. Everyone's forward. Zabax is forward. I don't know who threw their foot in front of that for Perth, but I think they've saved their team there. In comes the corner. Oh, good punch. Defended away. When he needed to get forward, he did, but he's been very good in that left fullback position. That's it. Lions unable to complete the fairy tale at the end of the day. The late goal to Chris Harold 
sings the locals host here at Perry yeah. Park after extra time Perth Glory have come away 1-0 winners against Lions FC Unfortunately, penalty saved. What went through your mind at that point? Yeah, I was a little bit upset because all this season I scored like six penalties in six tries. So I was a little bit upset, but the keeper was really good in the, in the penalty. So, yeah, I tried to lift it up in the first half, but I couldn't. But the second half, I think our team it was really good. Um, and the mood in the camp? Are you so proud of the run, or was it disappointing maybe you just bailed out at that point? Um, just what was the general feel for the team? For the team, uh, I was so happy, really proud. Like all that, the effort, first half, second half, extra time, we we did really well. I really enjoyed the game, all the game. And um, playing an A-League side, what did that mean to you? Means a lot, because back home in Brazil, I already play against pro like like them, so I was missing that, and that was a big challenge. It was good. Felt really good. Uh, and when you sit back and, and you look at Wednesday night, you might not realise what you've accomplished until you get towards the end of your career. Or someone like myself, that you know, the last five years I've worked quite hard to get back to a level where I'm, where I'm happy with, and it was it, it was an opportunity to enjoy it, enjoy the atmosphere, uh, experience what it's like to be playing an A leg or playing an A leg side. But um, the hard work had been done. Um, it was just about going out there, leaving it all on the line. And, and working hard as we do each and every week. And uh, obviously disappointing in result. Did you feel you could have gone on and maybe got a shot result? Oh, look, it's cup football. Um, and, and that's the difference between uh, a professional outfit and, and semi-professional. We, um, look, we had our chances. Uh, it, was, it was no one's fault that we didn't win. It's just that we went clutch uh, in taking those opportunities. Um, they got one, they were out on their feet and they and converted. <laughs> Um, and, and that's the difference at the top level. It's, it's the one percenters. I tell these boys each and every week, it's, it's not a case of we expect to win everything, but you can. It's just hard work, consistency. Uh, but Wednesday night, look, it was, it was great. It was great to come off the park and, and actually know we've accomplished so much. Oh, look, look, definitely. Um, to get to the round of 32 was fantastic. Go down to Adelaide was a great experience. Um, then to step out in the park in front of a great crowd on a Wednesday night and, and represent Brisbane and the BPL, um, especially as a captain, it, there's no greater feeling. Um, it, you know, we're there for a war and, and we, look, we, we gave it to them. We stretched them. For 120 minutes, we stretched them. Oh, it's been tremendous, you know. For a start, I think the, the whole concept of the FFA Cup is has been uh, you know, a revelation for FFA. Uh, it's given grassroots clubs, I guess, like ourselves, a real opportunity to showcase our players on the national stage. And um, you know, for our boys uh, to perform so well on the national stage has been a fantastic ride for us. So um, we're over the moon. Uh, the boys have had a tremendous experience and uh, we couldn't ask for any more.